I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Apollo 11 countdown is still go at this time. My name is Al Ragsdale. Uh, I'm a simulation engineer. I have worked on simulators at NASA starting in October 1967. Uh, I worked on the lunar module from the time it started all through Apollo. My first job at NASA was calculating square roots, not with a machine. I had to calculate square roots. I, I literally used a slide rule and an abacus. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. So I, I had, would have to come up with the equations of whatever was needed to, to do the mathematics for the equations of motion and the mass properties. And because of my piloting experience, uh, any, anything that changed in the program, I had to fly it and make sure it was going to work before the astronauts got there. We have a go for main engine start. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one, zero. The launch itself was very nominal, and, and I was just, I had gone to some briefings, you know, just before in the days before that, and we'd been simulating every malfunction they could think of. My, my main thought was, I hope we simulated it right. <laughs> you know, that, that we hope that we hadn't made a mistake. Altitude, velocity, light, three and a half down, 20 feet. The normal way the thing landed, it, it was flying backwards like this, uh, over thrust, slowing it down. Four and a half down, five and a half down. This is the front here. They had to spin it around 180 degrees. And then as you got close to the target, it would pitch over so you could actually see where you were going. 100 feet, three and a half down, nine forward. And I carried a clipboard around and I had written down the side of it, different events that were supposed to happen on the landing. But I was writing on this sheet of paper when they were landing Apollo 11. I was at, at mission control. So I'm at this altitude, this speed, this latitude, this longitude, that kind of thing. And so I was following this thing down, and I noticed very quickly they weren't following the way it was planned. Four forward, drift into the right a little. And it turned out that with all the computer alarms and things they had on the way down, that they were four miles away from their target. So he had to take over manually and pitch it forward like this, fly forward. And then just at the last second, he pulled the nose up, stopped it, and dropped. <laughs> Contact light. OK, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, both auto, decent engine command, override off. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twin Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. It was very scary. For, in fact, uh, right after he touched down, uh, Charlie Duke said, <laughs> you got a bunch of guys about to turn blue <laughs> because all, we were all holding our breath expecting them to abort because it used 1% of fuel every 20 seconds. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I saw the landing at home on my black and white television with rabbit ear antenna, and it was kind of unbelievable, <laughs> you know, actually, seeing it on television. We did it. It actually happened. It was like, it seemed a little surreal, like we had simulated it, and here it's really happening. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Here, men from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, it, is. it came in peace for all mankind. It has the, the crew members' signatures and the signature of the President of the United States. My name is Sheila Tebow, and I have been here That's since 1965. And I did work Apollo. I worked on the rendezvous docking simulator. Uh, Roger, our guidance recommendation uh, is pings, and you're cleared for takeoff. But when this asset vehicle came back up to lunar orbit, it had to rendezvous and dock with the command and service module. They couldn't see directly what they were doing. They, they had to view everything through closed circuit television. I had to look at the television monitors 
and the targets that were coming together and figure out the vertier acuity and the visual acuity and try to adjust the television monitor parameters to get the best resolution and the best accuracy that we possibly could. This was a crucial maneuver because if, if they missed, uh, they, they could be lost in space. And this would be in lunar orbit and we'd have no way of, of retrieving them. The criteria was bring them back alive. Bring them back alive. If you take imagination and motivation and teamwork, you can accomplish what seems impossible. And that's what we did. Necessity is the motherhood of invention. That phrase, necessity is the motherhood of invention. So I think we advance more technically when we have a, a, a bold mission uh, like this to, to pull us forward.